another document that the chemical process engineer must deal with when uh, purchasing our equipment is the piping documentation diagram of the equipment. Observe that for this diagram here, the EQ dash line represents the battery limit of the supplier. So everything that's inside the EQ is responsibility of the supplier and will be sent by the supplier and what is outside of the EQ dash line is responsibility of the engineering company or the PC company or eventually from the customer. And here you can see that the process engineer in the specification data sheet for quotation will inform the flat conditions at the battery limit of the equipment and the required pressure discharge at the battery limit of the equipment. As I told you, to do the calculations for the pressure rating or pressure ratio of the compressor, most often the supplier uses the nozzles information. And that do not matter for us if I am buying a package. So I am not too worried about how much is pressure at the nozzle discharge. It is more important to me in terms of purchasing to know the pressure at the fence of the equipment. Of course, that during evaluation, during the operations of the equipment, when you do the calculations for evaluation of performance, you will get into consideration what is available to you in terms of temperature, in terms of pressure, because you need that to do the performance of the equipment. And here, why I have dash line going outside of the boundaries or the battery limits of the equipment. I have this because, for instance, this T represents the temperature element for the temperature measurement. And also it's like a transmitter. So the signal transmitted by this element will go to my PLC. So this square with a cir circle here and a dash line here represents that this information will go to my supervisory. But before going to the supervisory, I need to add the cables to connect the cables to my PLC. So the communication between the TE and the supervisory is based on the PLC arrangement. In my control system, I will have also, in some cases, besides the information of temperature here, I will have an alarm for high temperature and I will have a signal or a set point for shutdown temperature. So the TSHH is a switch for the shutdown of the compressor and I will associate that with an alarm. The same for the alarm for the high temperature. So I have a switch for high temperature that will lead to the alarm of high temperature. Observe that in this case, I don't have a vessel separator to collect the condensate of the process. I don't have for two reasons. In the operating conditions of this equipment, I do not expect to have a lot of liquid condensating or remove, removal of condensate from my air. So what I did here also, what was done here is, is passed through the air at the gel side of the heat exchanger and consider the uh, boots or a removal of condensate at the shell side of the heat exchanger. I am able to do that because the amount of condensate to be removed not too much, so I will not increase too much my heat exchanger. Basically, what I want here is to cool down the, the air in not, just enough to enter the second stage of compression. And that's why I have here a temperature with a shutdown condition because if for any reason I lose my coolant, this temperature will increase a lot and to not damage, not damage the second stage of compression, I 
will shut down the machine. So when I stop the compression as a whole, I will decrease the temperature because now I don't have any more compression, any other compression. So this kind of evaluation is also the tasks of a chemical process engineer. Some alarms and shutdowns will be suggested by the vendor. Others will be added by the chemical process engineer. A HAZOP meeting must often also help to evaluate the hazard conditions or operability conditions of the system.